Hey guys and welcome to Performance Cars. So last week having had the Toyota AE86 for a review, we are lucky enough to have this lovely Blanco edition Toyota GT86. This is also known as the Toyota FT86, uh, Ski on FRS and Subaru BRZ. So let's go take a look around guys. So Toyota's GT86 Blanco Edition has been finished in a GT pearlescent white. It has the red and grey stripes along the bonnet, the red stripe on the lower bumper, along the door mirrors, the side of the car with the GT86 badge, along the roof, the sharp fin aerial, on the trunk, and the lower half of the bumper. So while we're at the rear, we might as well talk about it. We have twin exhaust tailpipes. These are 86mm in diameter, believe it or not. The fog light itself has been shaped as a T. You see it there. And the trunk itself is quite short. It really is a compact car. Alloy wheels themselves are Toyota's 18 inch GT86 model. So you can just see that there. Sorry, it's upside down. Uh, these are also larger than the usual 215 4517s. So these are 225 4018s. And that's the same as the ones at the front. And coming to the front, we have a cosmetic vent on the wing. And we come to this GT86 badge. So we'll have a talk about it. These two pistons are to show the box engine. And this 86 is supposed to show a car drifting. So if you imagine these red dots as the four wheels from a bird's eye view. Indicators. Another indicator with the fog light. HIDs are standard, of course. Daytime running light is built into the headlight. Headlight washers. And the lower front grille also has that T to illustrate Toyota. So as you can see it there. So yeah, the car itself is super clean. The owner has just picked it up, so it's done more or less 2,000 miles. But let's have a look at the interior. So moving on to the interior. I didn't mention what tires the car has so as you can see here this is the normal size that I mentioned 215 17s but for the Blanco edition we have the Yokohama 225 4018s V103 and it has a lovely red stitching along here also on the lower half by the speakers window switches mirror controls of course folding mirrors and i believe you can fit a drink in there you can just about see that there aluminium side seals leather seats leather sports seats actually should i say also the red stitching along the middle and on the sides and a leather strap it's pretty cool different steering wheel itself has red stitching too as well as the handbrake the gear knob and the gear gator so we have aluminium sports pedals with the gt86 on the car mats fuel door release and if we move up here we have the rear trunk release uh, the tpms and uh, brightness of the instrument cluster so here we have the instrument cluster I've had to turn the accessory on otherwise the beeping would be continuously going off uh, 7400 rpm and if we look onto the instrument cluster itself we have that T styling again just like the front grille and a rear fog light and believe it or not the rev meter is also 86 mil that's pretty cool Moving down to the center console, let's have a look at the dash first, it's quite flat. 
This has the nine speaker Bose system. Carbon fiber along the center console and the passenger. This has Toyota's sat nav. The usual clocks, temperature controls. Everything is very circular in here. And if I move down here for you guys, we also have the USB and auxiliary connection. This one, I can fit my phone in there. I'm not too sure if you have a larger phone. And of course, the engine stop start button. Moving down to the middle, we have the traction control and VSC sport button. And this being a Blanco edition, this has this badging around the center heated seats. So this is number 37. Two drinks holders with extra storage underneath it. So the rear seats are quite limited in space. There are only two seats here. Uh, foot space, um, that's with my seating position, so about five foot eight. It's not a lot, but they are quite deep. They look very comfy. Red stitching as well on the whole car. And to undo the rear seats, you just pop these buttons here until you can see it goes red. And you do that on the other side and you will be able to fold these down. And above here, you have the anchor for the child seats. Just remove that, you can see that there. So to open the rear trunk, you can either do this from the interior or on the key fob. We have this button down here, so you just press and hold, it pops open. So we are quite limited for space here. You can also fold down the rear seats, which I have unlocked already. I'm just going to give that a push. And you get more space if needed. Underneath the spare wheel cover, we have a tire repair kit. Tools on either side. So you can have the spare wheel as an option, but this one doesn't have it. So we'll move on to the engine bay. So this is the GT86 engine bay. We have Subaru's horizontally opposed boxer engine design with the help of Toyota's D4S fuel injection system. So we have the badging all over there. Just a Tom's radiator cap. But apart from that, this is completely standard with a, an aftermarket panel filter. Power is rated at 200 brake horsepower with 151 foot-pounds of torque. So this may not seem like a lot of power, but I'm looking forward to going for a drive. So let's get to it. So let's have a talk about the slip indicator and the VSC Sport down here. Um, if you have everything on, so nothing showing on the instrument cluster, you have a sense of security, so traction control, you have uh, the ABS controlling various brake discs around the car. Talking about brake discs, the rear discs are also ventilated, so that's pretty awesome. Um, but anyways, to turn VSC Sport on, you just tap the right button and you get the slip indicator above it, that's in amber, and the VSC Sport underneath it, which is in green. Turn off traction control, press that, the one on the left, the slip indicator on the button, press that once and you see TRC off on top of that and to switch all of those completely off press and hold this for about three to five seconds and then you get TRC off with slip indicator and the VSC sport in green that disappears so this would give you more how, how should I say it more fun in the corners so the back would step out more but this doesn't fully disable everything and um, to do that you have to do a few things with your handbrake your brake pedals and the buttons and that would disable everything and yeah nothing will save you if you go into a big spin but that would also record itself onto the ecu so yeah i wouldn't advise doing that so we just keep trc off with the slip indicator with no vsc sport on so let's go for a test drive all right guys so we're inside the gt86 and the first thing i'm going to try out is the cornering Hard on the brakes, heel and toes very nice. Nice turn in. Got the back stepping out of it. And we've got the traction control light coming on. So yeah, this thing it handles really well, but if you're going in too quick, the back steps out just as easily. 
200 brake horsepower, it might not seem like the most power ever, um, but it's more than enough, believe it or not. The interior, I love the steering wheel as well. My hands wrap around it nicely. We have the big tachometer, the rev meter in front of me uh, with the speedometer on the left. That reminds me of the Celica Sports M, if you remember that video. And yeah, the carbon surround surrounding the multimedia um, touchscreen. That's really nice. All the controls below it. The AC and the climate controls, those feels really cool as well. You just press down on it and to cancel it, you press it on again. And yeah, it's just, this car's really well built. These seats are so comfy. Uh, they do provide a, quite a bit of support on the sides, I'll say. And especially this car being so new. Um, yeah, it hasn't sagged down or anything like that. And it's nice having heated seats as well. So you get the, the warmth in the winter. And that's, that's really nice. So back down to third gear. Second. Third gear. Back down. Yeah, we've got back stepping out. This car just loves to rev all day long. The engine is really responsive. Really loves to rev as well. Coming out to the braking zone again, hard on the brakes. Third, nice heel and toe, lovely. Going on the exit. Just careful on the power, you don't want it to step out too much. nicely about 4,000 rpm as well the gear shifts are nice and crisp there's no short shifter but we don't need that down to second gear turn in and back out yeah we've got the back stepping out now definitely enjoyable you have to balance the throttle though don't go crazy and hammer that throttle because you will spin out quite easily but apart from that i think anyone can handle this nicely around the corners and this is on its standard suspension as well listen to that engine it sounds it just loves to rev let's around this corner i'll give it some again six seven up shift hard on the brakes again Right, so we've come to a stop. Um, quick thing I want to talk about is the rear view mirror. It's different to the designs of many other cars. Uh, this one, the lens, well, the glass goes all the way to the edge, uh, whereas the other, uh, for example, the one in my S2000, we have this black outer casing. So this is very nice. Gives it a very nice modern touch to it. So for the sake of this test, um, I'm gonna switch everything back on. So just tap them and make sure all the warning lights are gone. Just pick up some speed. Lovely engine though. Hard on the brakes again. Third gear. Turn in. Back on the power. Yeah. You can definitely feel all the controls and the braking on the, especially the outer tyres. You can feel it. The chassis twitching. Um, but it wouldn't let it step out at all. So those are some really safe controls Toyota has implemented into the system. Uh, do get used to them first before you want to switch them off and then yeah like I said earlier just balance the throttle first uh, before giving a bit more power and then your back should slide out easily. Coming up to another set of corners see how the braking feels so hard on the brakes nice downshift heel and toe quite decent back on the power we have all the way to 7000 you have a shift indicator as well that's pretty nice, didn't notice that before. I'm loving those pedals as well. They are nicely spaced out. I'll say, even better than the S2000. So I'm really enjoying that. Compared to the AE86, this is obviously standard. Uh, the AE86, that was just crazy. It was loud, it was stiff. Um, it has semi-slick tires. So I couldn't really, it's, it's not a good comparison between the two cars, but I can see how Toyota 
has tried to bring the characteristics of the AE86 over to the GT86. So we've got the engine at the front, it's sitting quite low, rear wheel drive, and yeah, this car is seriously fun. I would really like to see how this car feels on stickier tyres, so maybe some semi-slicks or AD08Rs. Um, the braking for the street is good at the moment, but if you're going to track it, maybe some uprated pads, and I'm pretty sure this thing will handle really well. Toyota GT86 weighs in at 1,278. We have this GT86 Blanco edition at 1,199. So guys, I want to say a big thank you to Carmen for letting me drive her Toyota GT86 Blanco edition today. Um, yeah, as you can tell, this car is brand new. She literally picked it up not too long ago. So yeah, many thanks for letting me drive it. Uh, this car is great. It handles so well. And with those wider 225 4018s compared to the 215s, um, yeah, you get more grip, but the back still steps out and you can control it easily. So, yeah, Subaru and Toyota did, get, did a great job. Subaru's engine, it revs nicely all the way to 7,400 RPM. And Toyota with the chassis, uh, yeah, great. But yeah, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe if you haven't already. Drive safely, take care, and I'll see you guys soon. Hey guys and welcome to Performance Cars. So today I'm really excited to have this Toyota AE86. This is the Corolla 11 model as opposed to the Sprinter Traino.